Yeah, that's not Resident Evil Survivor. I think that by the time they made Resident Evil 3, Capcom thought their traditional Resident Evil formula was getting a little stale. Granted, they still made Code Veronica for the Dreamcast, which kicked ass, but a week before that was released in Japan, the first Resident Evil game of 2000 would be Gun Survivor, at least for Japan. While Code Veronica hit North America on the Dreamcast in late February, Survivor took its sweet-ass time and didn't arrive until the end of August. Translation and localization problems, doing the inevitable... Mm, you'll see. Despite what some fans may want to argue, yes, this game is canon. You can thank Resident Evil Zero's prologue for that. Survivor takes place off the coast of Europe on the umbrella-owned Sheena Island. Unfortunately, no. Very little is revealed about the story at first, aside from a recap of events up until Resident Evil 3. It starts with the island already overrun by zombies, only these zombies seem to be less interested in consuming human flesh and more interested in ostrich beer. Yeah! We see not the main character dangling from a helicopter where he says, You're not going to get away! You know, the first Resident Evil gradually led us into the bad acting, but here we get it right away. You're not going to get away! You're not going to get away! What are you, a superhero? Yeah! Oh, apparently not. And before I forget to mention it, the voice actor for this guy is the same person who voiced Riesling in Musashi Samurai Legend. Yeah, the cast of that game is still haunting me. And while I'm at it, I'll point out that the guy voicing the lead character is Patrick Harlan, who's most well known for being in the two-man Japanese comedy act, Pakun Mako. And Matron! Three tunas. No! Matron! Four tunas. Mohia! The four tuna! Eight tunas. The Mohia! Pakun Mako, what is the Mohia? So they cast a comedian as the lead role for a game from a franchise that, even at the time, was known for laughably bad voice acting. I just thought I'd bring this up now so you can understand why whenever this game tries to have a serious moment, I just imagine the lead character doing this. One prissy looking white guy dangling from the landing skid is somehow enough to cause the helicopter to crash and the main character to eventually tumble out of it. Or at least we can assume it's the main character because he's on the cover of the damn game. Anyway, it turns out that, in a never before used plot device, he has amnesia! I choose to forget. He has a moment with himself and determines that not only will he go through the entire game with his face frozen in a constipated grimace, but that the gun he has is his only hope to survive. Wait the... Uh, wait... Not only does checking the helicopter he crashed in not do anything to help his memory, but if he really doesn't remember who or where he is, then how does he know that his only hope for survival is to shoot everything that moves? I'm sorry, but there are Phoenix Wright characters who don't contradict themselves as quickly. Now, I'm not usually one to talk about graphics, but I think it's worth noting that there are no pre-rendered cutscenes in Survivor. Zero. It just seems a bit odd to me, since they were in Nemesis and, hell, even two had some of them. But in Survivor, every scene is done with in-game models and environments. What happened? Budget limitations? Did the computers that usually make them explode? But BULLSHIT! Shortly after coming to, he finds the body of the man in white from earlier, in a small side street with some dog tags next to him. Mark Thompson, huh? And I guess I should mention that the big plot line in this game is how the main character is led to think that he's Vincent Goldman. It's me, Goldman. I know that's kind of a spoiler, but I don't care. The payoff makes no sense and... You know what, I'll save that rant for later. Vincent is the head of operations for Umbrella on the island, and one of the worst human beings to walk the face of the Earth. I thought I'd mention that now, because the game reminds you at almost every turn that Vincent is evil incarnate. Every time you meet someone else on the island or pick up a file, it makes sure to tell you at least one story about how Vincent is kidnapping children from all over the world to drill into their brains, killing his superiors to take their jobs, it just goes on, and on, and on. You are rotten, Mr. Vince. And... So he gets jumped by a zombie, and the game starts to pick up. 
Now there are a few key things about Survivor that make it different from every other Resident Evil to this point. Obviously, there's the first-person perspective, but there's also no limit to the amount of items you can carry, and there are infinite bullets for the handgun, which automatically reloads when you move to a different area. There are no puzzles, unless you want to count such brainbusters as PUT DISC INTO COMPUTER, and very little exploration to be done outside of seeing what other Capcom games are being shamelessly promoted in the background. As such, the game is especially linear, and focuses less on ambience and survival like the earlier Resident Evil games, and more on action. Like the later Resident Evil games. I know some people might argue that this makes the game more accessible to a wider audience by lowering the overall difficulty. But what ends up happening is, the game is way too easy, and way too short. So short, in fact, that it's entirely possible to beat this game in under an hour. Also hurting the atmosphere were some rather odd sound choices, specifically the music, which changes from the usual background ambience to unusually upbeat and dramatic tracks seemingly at random. It's like the developers couldn't decide if this was Resident Evil or House of the Dead. Then again, there are some music choices that just seem odd in general, like here in the underground facility. Am I finding the truth about Sheena Island, or am I going to the circus? As for the sound effects, they're alright, but they do have a tendency to glitch once in a while. There's also the ability to aim at certain parts of enemies, making it easier to get headshots. However, headshots tend to be sporadic in their effectiveness. Sometimes they'll cause a zombie to slow down or stop, and sometimes they won't. They seem to do more damage, but it takes anywhere from one to six shots to the head to drop the average zombie, so shooting the torso is just as or slightly less effective. There's also a massive delay on when they take effect, so the zombie will still be lurching forward and then after a few seconds, dead. Not that the other death animation is all that great either, as the zombie doubles over and then hits the floor in a single frame of animation. You can also press a button to quickly look at any enemies, items, or exits in the area. I'm still not sure if this is because they thought the game wasn't easy enough, or because it also doesn't help that after hitting an enemy, the crosshairs lock onto its torso, regardless of where you hit it before. But considering how fast the default handgun with a 17-bullet magazine can fire, the monsters in general are not too hard to kill. It's not so much Resident Evil Survivor as it is Resident Evil Shooting Gallery. Most enemies can be killed simply by shooting and backing up now and then. Zombies, lickers, hunters, they're helpless before the amazing strategy of walking backwards. Of course, that's assuming the monsters actually see you. In several areas, standing still makes you invisible to enemies until they're a few feet away. Amazingly enough, this doesn't happen with the zombies so much as the hunters and especially the lickers. I'm directly in its line of sight. There's no way it couldn't see me. Then there's shit like this. Look, I know you're a T-virus abomination with an exposed brain and no eyes, but I'm pretty sure you can figure out how doorways work. In fact, enemy AI across the board is unusually stupid, even by zombie standards. Hunters tend to ignore things like footsteps, gunshots, or other hunters three feet away from them being shot repeatedly. And then there are the Cerberus... While they're the hardest to hit and one of the more aggressive enemies, even they have their moments where, oh, okay, this really has turned into a goddamn shooting gallery.